Good morning, all. Today is Monday, 16th of March. We will uh, be studying stellar classification and evolution. We started star classification previously in the school, and now we want to continue and reach to uh, star evolution. You can find everything here, pages 182 to 186 in your book. Let's revise it quickly. Well, uh, there are seven classes for stars. Uh, class O, which is a blue color. It's considered to be a very hot star. It's very bright. The luminosity of the star is extremely bright. Radius is so big. Although the mass is so big, but the life span is shortest. We did not explain what is meant by life span. We will today, inshallah. The other classes, you need to know them in order. We have O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. The color for each star must be, for each class, must be memorized. O is a blue. A, B is a blue white, A is a white, F is a yellow white or white yellow, مش مشكلة. G is a yellow and K is orange and finally M is the red. You need to know the order of them. You need to know that the temperature is descending as you are going down. The temperature descending. You need to know the range of the temperatures, starting from 40,000 Kelvin for the O class, which is the blue. So the blue star is the hottest. In the book, they say it differs from 28,000 to 50,000 Kelvin. I prefer to memorize this number because we will use it after a little bit. Down to the red star, which is the uh, uh, M class, its uh, temperature is around 2,500 Kelvin. Luminosity compared to luminosity of sun starts maximum, drops down to minimum. Radius to compared to radius of sun starts from maximum, drops to minimum. Even the mass of the star from maximum compared to mass of star of sun from maximum to minimum. And the lifespan here it's the shortest and here is the longest. What do you mean by this? We will talk later on. Okay, now uh, 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 we have. A diagram which we call it Hertz Spring Russell diagram. So this diagram is called Hertz Sprung. This is the name of scientist Russell, another scientist diagram in which he put he discovered here all these all of these stars he put them on a graph which we compare the luminosity with temperature so this is the temperature in kelvin and this is luminosity compared to luminosity of sun okay he discovered that this scale starts from 40,000, 50,000. Let's start from 40,000, not necessarily to start from here. Let's say this is 40,000 Kelvin. This is non linear scale. So let me put here, let's say after the same distance, this is 20,000. Same distance, 10,000. Same distance, 5,000. Same distance, 2,500. So if you see the distance from here to here, it's let's say one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, one centimeter, but the temperatures are not linear. So the first one centimeter has 2,000, 20,000 Kelvin difference, 10,000 Kelvin difference. You need to memorize it this way then because they will ask you to put the temperature on this scale. You have to know this order. It's a, it's a, it's non-linear. Uh, it looked like this. And also the... Uh, 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 luminosity compared to luminosity of sun here yeah, not necessarily to be in the middle exactly somewhere here let's say when the ratio is 1 and then we want to see when the ratio is 10 to the power of 2 10 to the power of 4 10 to the power of 6 also when it is a smaller 10 to the power of negative 2 
10 to the power of negative 4. In fact, there is nothing 10 to the power of negative 6, but if you want to put it, no problem. So here, there is no unit for this, because it's just only ratio between luminosity and luminosity of sun. Here, the uh, unit is Kelvin. Now, all of these stars, the O till the M stars, he discovered that they lie within this region, which he called it main sequence. So, if you know what is the temperature of a star, you can tell what is the luminosity with respect to, to sun. For example, when the ratio is 1, if you go there, you will find here is the sun and the temperature is around around 6,000 Kelvin. Yani not exact, but accepted. Okay. Now, do we have stars not on the main sequence? Yes, we have stars not on the main sequence. If we find a star within this region where the, where the luminosity is 10 to the power of 2 and more, and within this, it will be red because the temperature is small, but it will be big. So we call it red giants. If it's higher and rare to find these, they will be super giants. In fact, we have in this region, if you come to this region, this is blue super giant. And in this region, it's red. I am writing the colors differing to the temperature. So the red is 2,500, the blue is 40,000. And but both are super giants. And here, in fact, there is rare red super giant, but what? Similar, if you have here red giant, then here it will be blue giant. Here it will be the white giant. Here it will be and whatever, yani, depends. So, so this scale determines the color of the scale, determines whether it's a giant or dwarf. So if you come to here, when it's 10 to the power of negative four, it's a very small one, we call it white dwarf. I don't, I will write it this, around, around between 20 and 10 thousands. Here we have a region where we have white dwarf stop. Here it's a red dwarf star, there it will be, uh, and so on, and so on. What are you trying to tell us, Ustaz? Okay, I want to erase this because it's not important. In fact, these are the only important ones there. So, blue supergiant, white dwarf, red giant, and the main sequence. All the stars that we put them here in classification, all of these stars are considered to be in the main sequence because they are in, we call it a stable stage, okay? So, when a star is in the main sequence, then it is in its stable stage. What do we mean by this? It means two things. It means, first, when the star is here, it's stable. When it's red giant or white dwarf, even the blue is, st is stable. But the red giant and the, war, the white dwarf, because they are not on the main sequence, they are unstable. So, first you need to know where are the stable stars. Second, you need to know that all of these stars, they are stable for a while and then they will move to another region where they will start their dying process. They will not be stable anymore and uh, they will not be in the main sequence anymore. Okay? Clear. Sure. So, so far, we have uh, these stars. They are there. We said when they are in the main sequence, they are in stable stage. What causes the star to be stable or not? In fact, there are two forces 
acting on each star when it is in the main sequence and these two forces are in balance the two forces one it's an outward force produced by the outward radiation pressure we call it radiation pressure due to fusing hydrogen into helium if you remember with me when we studied fission and fusion we said fusion exists in stars and this process when hydrogen nucleus fuse with another hydrogen nucleus they produces energy and this energy creates an outward pressure so the star wants to expand but at the same time there are inward gravitational force between the parts of the star itself you know, this part of the star attracts this part of the star so there is an inward gravity also there is an outward pressure these two are balanced because uh, not because you know, they are balanced so we consider uh, the star to be in a main sequence so when a star is in the main sequence then it is in a stable stage I want to erase this so I continue because my board is small where the outward radiation pressure they call it outward radiation pressure between bracket from where this pressure comes in bracket produced by fusing hydrogen is balanced by the inward gravitational force and this force it's because of between the parts Of the star so when these two forces are balanced the star is considered to be stable star and we will find it within the main sequence and if you find a star that is a giant this means it's not in the main sequence this means it's not stable this means these two forces are not in balance anymore clear now this is Hertzsprung-Russell diagram we may use it to know what is the temperature of a star or if you know the temperature you can tell what is its luminosity compared to luminosity of sun and since the luminosity of the sun is constant so we can find the luminosity of the star itself so okay we'll talk about this more in more details later on now we want to talk about stellar evolution stars evolution how they are created and what would happen next after this would happen okay unfortunately I need to erase this so I will erase even the title and now let me talk about just put take a new title let's say stellar evolution all stars are formed from a protostar what is this protostar? It is a cosmic cloud, good cosmic gases, they say, that contains, you don't need to memorize these, but contains 78% of hydrogen and 21% of helium and 1% all other elements exist in the universe. So all stars, they start from a protostar. You don't need to memorize this number which for a reason nobody knows 
has been exploded forming all of these stars and this is what we call it the big bang the big bang is when the protostar the cosmic cloud shattered matter within the universe and created all of these stars so what are what is sorry the life cycle of a star cellular evolution it's a life cycle of a star we have two life cycles we have to know them both first when we have a low mass star when we are talking about low mass star we're talking about stars that they have mass similar to our sun or a little bit greater or a little bit smaller so how the low mass star what is the life cycle of a, of a low mass star now, all of them, as we said, they start from protostar. That after explosion formed a star just like our sun. Like sun. Now, when the star is in this region, it is in the main sequence. I don't want to write it again, as we said in the main sequence, it's fusing hydrogen and hydrogen producing helium. This fusion process producing upward radiation pressure balanced by the inward gravity. So the star is in a, a, a stable stage. If you remember the classification, we said there is a lifespan. This means how long this star will last in the main sequence, in the stable stage. So if you remember, Ulna, the blue, which is uh, the class O, which is the hottest, it will stay the least time stable, and then it will change to another type of stars. Also, the uh, red was the longest. You don't need to, to memorize numbers there. You can check them on the book in these two pages, in these pages there. I don't want to, to bother you with the numbers. They are not required, but just to know that here, hydrogen and hydrogen, are fusing producing helium okay now after most of the hydrogen is used up most of the hydrogen is uh, fused to helium most of hydrogen fused into helium then the amount of energy that results is very great making the outward pressure more than the inward gravity which causes the star to expand a little bit and this expansion causes the temperature of the star to fall down so the star like our sun our sun will expand and other stars similar to our sun will expand and they will become a red giant when it's in a red giant this means it is it started the unstable process the unstable stage it is in the dying process here it's young it's still in the stable process now here it is unstable so they say our sun will expand to the radius of venus so mercury and venus will be exploded will be embedded inside the sun and the earth will be too close so we don't know what's, what's the result of this, but we know that it's very dangerous to do this. And it's also, it will be very cold. The temperature of the sun is around 6,000 Kelvin. It will become red, so it's around 3,000, 2,500 Kelvin. It will be too cold to support life on, on Earth here. Now, when, the, when it is in a, a, a red giant, helium and helium, they start fusing together, producing a bigger nuclei like carbon or oxygen, whatever. This is an unstable stage. It causes the star to explode and shatter matter in uh, the universe, which we call it planetary nebula. Planet, planet, Re nobula nobu 
nebule. Now, the planet nebula will end up. Now, here it will be. There is a, 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 a huge gravity there that will contract the star very close together make it a dwarf and as as it becomes very close the temperature rises up very high and producing white dwarf the white dwarf is a very small star that is very hot around uh, 10 to 20,000 Kelvin but its luminosity is too little because it's too small luminosity remember depends on temperature also it depends on the size 4 pi r squared if you remember so it's very short producing very uh, small luminosity compared to luminosity of sun and it will uh, this one will keep falling in temperature until it become red dwarf and the book says that eventually it will become a black dwarf and they say the black dwarf is an imaginary stage where the star uh, the, the time for the star to move to go from protostar to black dwarf it's uh, yani it's more than the age of the universe which is around 14 billion years we'll talk about the age of the universe later on but uh, this is the life cycle of a low mass star now if I have a high mass star high mass star 2 all of them they start from protostar but they will not become uh, it will become blue super giant This is formed because the mass here is more than four times the mass of the sun. So this is considered to be high mass star. Now here it fuses, uh, fuses hydrogen and hydrogen into helium at very high rate. Why? Because the temperature is very high. And we said for fusion we need very high temperature and the temperature is extremely high so hydrogen and fuses hydrogen fuses into helium at very fast rate causing the star to be in the main sequence this is in the main sequence but in main sequence but for very short time so this means if we look to the hearst prang russell diagram seeing how many red, blue super giant now and how many blue super giants in the past we will find that the blue super giants in the past they are much more than this time because they stop being in the main sequence anymore and they change to a red giant similarly when most of the hydrogen is fused into helium now there is no outward pressure anymore so it will contract it will not expand it will contract because it was super giant now it's giant and it will cool becomes a red, uh, a red giant which is uh, uh, they say it is a very complicated stage where hydrogen and hydrogen helium and helium sorry fuses to produce bigger nuclei and then these bigger nuclei they start fusing together so Hydrogen, 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 sorry, helium, 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 three heliums producing carbon. Carbon fuses with another element like oxygen or carbon, another one producing silicon and so on. So they end up, uh, is an hydrogen, hydrogen fuses, fuse, producing bigger nuclei that start fusing together which is extremely huge process complicated process we don't know exactly what's happening there it ends up with huge 
enormous explosion that can be seen by naked eyes is what the book is saying about an explosion called type 2 supernova so in type 2 supernova everything will be shattered uh, 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 the star will end up and uh, everything will be shattered like this uh, to produce a very complicated uh, star uh, explosion now the result of this explosion are two things either neutron star or black hole star The neutron star is a star that made up entirely from neutrons, so there are no atoms, only nuclei. And nucleus does not have had proton neutrons here, it has only neutrons, so it will be extremely dense star. And yeah, and if you try to find how much the density of this, it will be much, much, much more than. Uh, the sun because the mass here is around three mass of the sun or maybe less smaller than three times the mass of the sun but in a very small star up to 10 kilometer in in the in diameter so it will be density mass over volume mass is so big volume is too small it will be huge uh, 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 density there so attraction very big and the black hole is even denser because the mass here is more than three times the mass of the sun you know I mean when type 2 supernova explodes it shatters matters it throw matters through the universe if this matter that has mass smaller than three the mass of the sun it will become a neutron star uh, if it becomes uh, uh, if it has a bigger mass more than three times the mass of the sun it will become black hole and the black hole has huge 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 uh, 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 gravity to the limit that they say anything can even if it travel by speed of light it will be attracted so in words they are saying that attracts photons also although we know that the gravitational force does not apply to photons because they are waves not particles but we don't know a lot about black holes but this is the the uh, 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 life cycle of a high mass star. So if I go back to her sprung Russell diagram, where we said this is luminosity compared to the mass of sun, this is temperature. We said it's here. This is the blue supergiant, and these are the stars, the low mass star. This is high mass star. Both will go to a red giant. The red giant, it will shatter to type 2 supernova outside, it's not here, ending up by neutron or black hole. Or maybe if it was a low mass star, it's go to the giant, then it will become white dwarf, and the white dwarf will continue to become red dwarf, and finally it will go outside to become a black dwarf. This is still a revolution how stars are started and what is the end of each star okay enough for this for this lesson we will continue uh, after uh, in the coming uh, session